Tesla continues to make tweaks and changes to both incentives and even vehicle trims. So they just discontinued selling the base Model 3 real-wheel drive in the U.S., possibly because it was using a Chinese LFP battery and the U.S. government raised tariffs on Chinese EV imports from 7.5% to 25%. Tesla also is extending their zero down due to assigning for all new Model Y and some Model 3s if the order is placed after October 1st. These incentives are likely to keep sales growing. We'll watch a video today from Wall Street Journal Tim Higgins and how they see the 6% delivery growth. Ford Motor CEO Jim Farley announced a new incentive program to boost their sales. They're now offering a free home charger and installation for every new Ford EV purchase. EV sales in Norway has hit all-time highs with 96% of all car sales in August now electric and every third sale is a Tesla. Finally, we've got a graph to show you just how much Legacy Auto fallen off a cliff in China. I've got Brian White, my favorite. I said they, I said that to all my guests, by the way. My favorite guest, Brian White. Thank you for joining me. That makes me feel so special, <laughs> Herbert. <laughs> I mean, can I just have one thing first? You miss my birthday. No, I'm just kidding. No, this is yeah, this is uh, this was such a great. Uh, yeah, there's there's big news this week, obviously, and uh, you always manage to catch me on a good news day. So let's get into it. Yeah, more importantly, it's the news that you're very, very good at. You've got lots of very good, smart comments to share with the audience here. So obviously, we've been following this. And again, just yesterday, Tesla discontinued the base Model 3 real-wheel drive in the U.S. The pre-existing Model 3 long-range uh, real-wheel drive is now the entry-level trim. But uh, the, the base one is gone. It comes with 363 miles of range and starts at $35,000. That's the now the entry level trim. You can see here that the base Model 3 is no longer uh, being able to be offered. Uh, you can see before it was, and now it's no longer there. So this, um, this means Tesla now no longer sells any cars in the U.S. that uses the Chinese LFP battery. One possible explanation is that a few days ago, Biden administration raised tariffs on these Chinese EVs imported to the U.S. They raised it from 7.5% uh, to 25%. Uh, if you import it, the tariffs was raised from 25% to 100%. But if you have lithium ion batteries and battery parts from 7.5 to 25%. What's your explanation for why they did this? Well, uh, foolishly, they said we want all battery manufacturing in the U.S. without stopping to think that LFP batteries are not yet made at scale in the U.S. And this is the reason they canceled it. Absolutely. There was two big drawbacks. Of course, the car itself doesn't qualify for the $7,500 IRA credit. Right. But more importantly, that increase in tariff, let's say the battery is only uh, 60 kilowatt hours. Uh, if we're talking an extra uh, 25, 20% on the cost of that battery, what's the battery cost? Six, 7,000, an extra 20%, that's three grand. Three grand eaten into uh, the, the margin, or more importantly, just tacked onto the price, plus the $7,500 being gone, the car no longer makes sense. So unfortunately, until LFPs are being made economically in the US, you're not going to see it come back. And I think that's a mistake. That, thank you for that. That was the best explanation because yes, it's because they also don't qualify for the $7,500 anyways. Okay, so the, now the next thing, that's the uh, big news there. But the other one is they're, Tesla's extending their zero down offer for the next month, also starting October 1st for all new Model Ys and select Model 3 trims. You know, this, this zero down is uh, pretty good. I think the interest rate's still at 2.99%. So you saw that obviously with the Q3 numbers, we were just in line with expectations. And so it looks like that they're still softening in um, in demand in terms of like, you know, still growth. It's just not like massive growth. And so they need to continue to offer incentives like this, right? Tesla is just lying all the time. They <laughs> promised me a $35,000 Model 3. Guess what? We have it. We've had huge inflation since then. Adjusted for inflation, 35,000 is now like 44,000, but we still have a $35,000 Model 3, and it's better than the one we were promised. We were promised ridiculously short range, 2 250 miles, uh, and now it's 300 plus. It is way more car for less money. And, uh, and uh, would you like some incentives with that? Would you like it? Uh, would you like the, the IRA credit? Would you like a possible state credit on top of that? Would you like, uh, perhaps a home charger installation credit from your state? Uh, there are a whole bunch of reasons this makes sense. And, uh, 
I think this will help, you know, boost demand uh, while the economy is still I guess a little softer than we'd like it to be and while rates are still a little higher than we'd like them to be but it's all good news. So we are both and I think many of us are expecting to continue these incentives zero down 0%, 0% 1.99% um you know um you know the other kinds of uh incentives that they have a lot of levers that's one of the things you've been saying for a while is Tesla has so many things that they can pull and they're starting to do it. They might actually do a lease deal I think. That's what I'm expecting something hmm. now. Something and by the out. way, all, if you are doing a lease, you do get the 7,500 regardless of where the vehicle is from due to some weird way the law is written. Mm. Um, but uh, it wouldn't be in sufficient volume to justify bringing in those LFP batteries. Nice. <laughs> Brian, your knowledge is just always blows me away. Check him out on his YouTube channel, Futuraza. Do you want to know? He knows everything. <laughs> he knows everything. Appreciate oh, that, Brian. Things. Yeah, much more than this guy, I guess. This guy's a <laughs> Wall Street Journal business <laughs> wow. columnist, Tim Higgins. We're gonna watch his his uh, his video here. I think he's saying some right things. I'm not. I'm just joking. But uh, um, you know, Tesla has been aggressive in adjusting its prices, and you know, obviously, what they're trying to compete in China. Its sales are still doing very well in China. In fact, most of the growth is in China because of their aggressive incentives. They have to do that, not only because of the economy, but also they are competing with lower price cars there. So let's watch uh, what this Tim Higgins uh, said about uh, Tesla. Why don't we start with Tesla, especially because uh, we just mentioned your book right there. Looking at the delivery numbers, the forecast is for a 6% increase year over year, 463,000 deliveries. Can you put that in a context for us? Obviously, a year over year increase, that's always good. An escalation back to growth, that's always good. But we keep talking about this rising Chinese competition. So in that context, what is a 6% rise in, in deliveries? What does that mean for Tesla? Yeah, it's not as good as it was in the past few years, and we've seen explosive growth from Tesla. Uh, the beginning of this year, really not seeing that. The first two quarters were down. So uh, returning to growth, the growth story is what Tesla needs. It's a growth story stock. Uh, investors looking for the, the idea that the company is going to be growing hugely in the next few years, right? And so part of that is this week's announcement. Part of that is going to be next week's announcement with the robo-taxi event where Elon is, is supposed to be giving more of his kind of uh, vision for the future. If you're an investor in Tesla, those are the kinds of things you look for uh, beating expectations, hopefully today and then next week's announcement. You know, very quickly, I want to hit some of these other automakers, but what are your expectations for that robo-taxi event? Is that also going to be a stock mover, or is a lot of that already priced in, the idea that he's going to come out with some innovation when it comes to autonomous driving and all those kind of things? It's likely already kind of priced into the stock. We've kind of seen that. It's a lot of investors don't expect this in the near term. Uh, you know, looking at the results uh, this month um, from Tesla, there's also going to be a lot of interest in how they're doing in China. Uh, the expectation is that today's results were probably largely due to uh, China sales. Uh, Tesla's been very aggressive in, in adjusting its prices over there as it competes against foreign rivals or for Chinese local rivals uh, in the EV space. And so it's it's kind of a, a to punch, if you will. Investors want to see that the excitement for the future, but also kind of where they are coming in on profitability uh, towards the end of the month with the expected earnings results. All right, let's talk about Stellantis very quickly. So they raised their guidance for sending less vehicles to the United States and North America. Uh, before it was 100,000, now it's 200,000. Um, one of the things they cited for some of the pressure they're, they're facing is increased Chinese competition, but we don't sell a lot of Chinese vehicles here in North America. Remember, this is the parent of, of Jeep and Ram and other things. What's going on with Stellantis? Yeah, Stellantis is a kind of a, a two stories there. You, uh, the European automakers are all talking about challenges in China, but Stellantis in the U.S. has been troubled for months now. Lots of industry observers noting that inventories were really swelling. Uh, dealers concerned about uh, their inventories and really pressuring the company to uh, mark down or put some incentives to move that metal. Uh, you you got to remember uh, uh, Chrysler, Jeep. These are this is a company that's made a lot of money from selling expensive SUVs. Vs, and we're in a market now where the consumer is looking for cheaper vehicles. You, you remember the, the average cost of a new vehicle sold last month in the U.S. was about $10,000 more than it was uh, it, uh, right before uh, COVID uh, really sent prices skyrocketing. 
at the end of 2019. So right now there's a, this kind of belief that the consumers may be priced out of these vehicles, even with the Fed lowering rates and kind of put pressure to kind of lower prices here in the next few months, not just for Stellantis, but General Motors and Ford, really kind of the end of the gravy train that we per perhaps have seen in the last few years. All right, last question. I want to hit on Ford. Last quarter, they actually indicated they're going to increase their production of electric vehicles, but it seems like those hybrid vehicles seem to be really uh, what's sparking a lot of sales growth. What are you expecting from Ford? Yeah, the hybrid is an interesting kind of evolution in the marketplace. For so long, we saw uh, automakers trying to rush towards the idea of being fully electric to kind of copy what Tesla was doing. But Ford and Toyota have really found some success in that kind of in-between area with hybrids, uh, appealing to customers who aren't quite ready to go all in on EVs, who still want kind of the flexibility of having a gas, but also some of the advantages of the electrification of the car. Uh, he's not terrible. Uh, you know, I mean, he said that. A few things there. Stellantis and uh, all those names, by the way, Mercedes, Aston, uh, they, they all reported profit, um, you know, shockers, like it's going to be completely revised downwards. Uh, what was your thoughts on everything he said there? So he said uh, people are looking for cheaper cars, and I disagree. People are looking for more value. They will pay more for more value. Uh, Costco is the good example. I can get stuff cheaper at places other than Costco, but at Costco, the quality is twice as good for just a little bit more. And a lot of people will do that. You're seeing people, I mean, uh, I've had people try and tell me, oh, the Tesla Model 3 is too expensive. I can get a Corolla for 20000 I said, first of all, no, you can't. They don't carry the $20,000 version, and those are not the same car. You don't have the panoramic glass. You don't have the amazing uh, immersive sound system, the neck-snapping acceleration. It is not the same car. People will pay more to get more if the value is there. Um, I would say that host asked remarkably good questions, and the guest, while not uh, as polished as you might like, uh, seems to know his stuff. Uh, so I, I guess I would say I appreciated all that. We are seeing a lot of companies really struggling to move metal. And we're seeing other companies, specifically most of the ones in China, um, are having record quarter after record quarter. Um, but they're not selling the cars into the U.S. or as much into Canada and Europe as you might think. Where are they going? Everywhere. Southeast Asia, a, a few in England, a few throughout Europe. The world is a big place, and it doesn't take very many markets with just a handful of vehicles to eat up all that production. And as the reputation gets out there and the cars are good, you're going to see more sales. And then uh, this idea that they're going to take cars made in China, bring it to the U.S. or Canada, it's, it's um, I don't know why no. they're even talking about that. Tariffs have been happening. Software bans are starting to happen. Um, so this is uh, latest news here. Canada is also going to join the U.S. Consider banning Chinese-made software in the EVs. This is something that, uh, you know, the U.S. Has, U.S. has been talking about. The Canadian government may impose 100% tariff rates on China-made products. So first of all, that, those are the implement of, of, of sending electric vehicles to the U.S. But they're also going to be imposing, like, actual bans on the actual uh, software that's coming from any China and Russian vehicles, national security risk. So yeah, this is something that we've been expecting. That is the one thing that would stop the factories from going to Mexico or South Carolina. If you can't have the software running, and I think it might have been last week when we discussed this, in the comments someone said, well, why don't they just buy the software from Tesla? Yeah, because it's not that easy. It's, it's, that's like doing a... Uh, a artery transplant. You can do one, but to do all of them is going to kill you. The It's so integrated into what the vehicle is. And if you think you can just take someone else's software and make it run on your vehicle, I would point to all the legacy car companies that do exactly that and the nightmare that ensues. Um, Tesla doesn't need that line of business, uh, so they wouldn't have the same motivation to get it to work as someone like Magna might, um, a very large part supplier. So, yeah, the idea that these cars are going to be sold in the U.S. and Canada is mistaken. Chinese-built cars will not be sold in the U.S. Um, realistically, in the next 5, 10 years, it, they could be someday in the future. I'm sure there was a time when we said we'd never buy anything made by Germany or by Japan or by whoever the enemy of the day may have been. But 
uh, time heals all wounds, but that time is not five years. So there's a whole lot of market to be addressed before then. Okay. Well, this is what Ford is doing. Ford, um, Jim Farley announced that they're going to now give free home chargers and standard insulation. So normally the home chargers typically cost what, 800 to a thousand dollars. And then the installation itself can go from a thousand to 2000, depending on your setup and your electrician. Uh, they're going to give that for free. So this is their thinking. If you buy a Ford electric truck, SUV or van, and um, he, they were citing, citing a stat for them anyways, that 90% of people who want to buy an electric vehicle, they're, they're not doing it. The reason is because they know that, you know, they're confused and they know that they need to put this together. What do what you think about this incentive? I love it. I think it's a great idea. I feel like we've seen it. I don't remember if it was with Ford or someone else. It might've been GM at one point. Um, but if you need to reach out to people who are very hesitant to adopt, this is a great way to do it. I don't know what the retail cost is on their charger, but their cost to manufacture it is probably 150 bucks. So whether they sell them for 200 or 800 doesn't matter. It's it's a cost they're absorbing. The bigger question is how much uh, how much are you given for standard installation? Because <clears throat> um, some people have very long runs. Some people have neighborhoods where contractors like to charge more. Um, but I'm sure there's a limit on it, and it's all well thought out. Uh, this is something that I think needs to happen. I get people in the comments all the time. No, no, no. EVs are more expensive than gas cars. Here's some outlier example. Uh, one guy said, uh, public charging in Oregon is 43 cents a kilowatt hour. That's the, and so I, of course, had to look it up. No, no, that's the average. And by average, I don't know how they arrived at it. Most people charge at home for eight cents, not 43. Uh, most of the people who charge publicly charge at a Tesla station. Those are not 43 cents in Oregon. Maybe they're taking an average of sites, including Electrify America, but then they're leaving out all the free chargers. If the obstacle is I don't have home charging, this makes it easier. Perfect. Yeah, I love this. I love that incentive. Um, and this is where we're headed with those incentives for, for electric vehicles. You take a look in Norway, they've hit a brand new electric vehicle record. Now, in uh, I think in September, 96.4% of all new cars sold in Norway were electric. So basically, we're there. Almost 100% now is electric. Of course, it's it's as close to 100% EV that they were trying to hit by 2025. So the 12,495 electric cars sold in September. So it's a small market. Um, you know, it's 94.0%. <laughs> I'm I'm confused. I think 94% was what happened in August. Now they're 96%. So they're they I think that's up. right. Yeah. And by, so it's just by, a short time. They yeah. closed that remaining gap by a yeah. third, which is huge. And getting yeah. getting from night from high night from nineties to a hundred is real tough. But when they say uh, they could make it by their twenty twenty five target, I think they will. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like only four hundred seventy one cars did not have battery electric drive. That's uh, crazy small. And they they say the reason has been um, uh, seeing economic recovery, which could lead to more people to visiting car dealerships and a large shipload of Teslas, many of which were ordered a long time ago. So Tesla looked like, and we'll, we'll report this, one in three is a Tesla. Here's the car registrations in Norway in the last 12 months. Um, each month, I think the, green, the yellow is BEVs, and this is all uh, electric. So uh, all car, all vehicles. So you can see here what happened. I wonder it's if this getting, is because of incentives or something like that, but um, they just yeah. caught up. It there? just caught up. And so think about that for a second. When you say one in three EVs are Teslas, mm -hmm. you're like, well, yeah, that makes sense. But it's really one in three cars. Yeah. Because it, all car, yeah. almost all cars are. So Good when point. you're in Norway, when people are rolling in, getting their new tabs, their new stickers, whatever, a third of them are really three and Ys because yeah. the SNX are still low volume vehicles. So this is huge. <laughs> huge huge you can't ask yeah. for better than that i remember i asked you this question a long time ago like why norway why all these cold climate countries in europe and yeah it's all incentives but i mean like you know can you imagine in a cold snowy place they can do this so the other news of course is every third new car registered in norway in september was a tesla yeah so they're on track to 100 percent here's the stats here um 
Yeah, one and three. And it's like, and it's a runaway too. All the others make it up. Tiny little numbers here. Yeah. Model Y, Model 3, look at that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, huge, huge. Yep. And uh, the, the, so let me answer the question, why Norway? Why uh, these cold northern countries? Well, the incentives are big. Uh, the penalties on ice are big. Uh, but the thing is, the heat pump system really works. We've seen people like... Um, uh, Tesla Bjorn and uh, Lars from Bess and Tesla, who've done Arctic Circle trips in threes and Ys. They work. They're fine. So, well, you get a range hit. Okay, but it's not substantial. And internal combustion cars also have a range hit in extreme cold. The difference is you can go inside and leave your climate control on, or you can just fire it up right before you get in the car so it's warm when you come outside. You don't have to scrape your windows if they're already thawed. Um, it's just better. It's just a better system for extreme weather. I love it. Thank you for explaining that. So back to Norway, the brand has taken up delivery of both the old bestseller Model Y, which was built in Germany, but also they started receiving larger deliveries of the Model 3, the upgraded Model 3 from the factory in China. So this is uh, one of the reasons, obviously, they have a little bit lower priced car or, or just a different form factor. So uh, that down here says that Tesla now after left behind a good single month, but the brand is now uh, Tesla. It's a total market share of 20% so far in 2024. 20% of all cars in Norway, Volkswagen falls below 10%. And worth noting, Norway is not a part of the EU. It's part of oh. Europe, of course, but not the EU. So those import tariffs that the EU voted on don't apply to Norway or England. Um, that's why they have their own money and don't use the Euro. Uh, so they, are able to make rules that apply better to them. They don't need protectionist policies to keep foreign automakers out when they don't really make cars. So they've got uh, different incentives that make more sense to them. Brian, you are wickedly smart. Jesus. I am I, crushing I, it today. I didn't know all this stuff. Uh, the better question is, how do you always know what your guests are going to know? Because you're very I, good you're at gonna that. You were going to say, how come you don't know this stuff? No, because there's too many, because there's, there's too many different specialties and you just yeah. are good at finding what mine are. There you go. You're very, very good. Thank you. Appreciate this. I'm so glad you're here to explain it to everybody. This is the whole point, right? We want to get brighter. We want to hear more, learn more. Uh, what's happening in China? So we've been reporting this quite regularly. Legacy Auto has fallen off the cliff. Nobody wants to buy Legacy Auto. Those brands not selling in China. Obviously, because China has, you know, hundreds and hundreds of their own version, they're lower priced, but something about the brand, because the interesting conversation, Brian, was people are saying, well, every single legacy auto, except for Tesla, has partnered with other, well, manufacturers, Tesla's not, a, not a legacy auto. I'm just saying that, you know, they've all partnered with a joint venture in the Chinese. And so then, you know, it's being made by a Chinese car company. Why are they still not selling well? And so some of them have taken off their, their, you know, their, their name brand off of it. Um, and so the vehicle sales in China from GM, Volkswagen, and Nissan have fallen in the first half of 24, 2024 off a cliff. That's continued in Q3. Um, China is a market where Volkswagen has made not long ago, 40% of its sales. I and mean, this is the story. This is the thing that people are not realizing. If you take a look at General Motors in green and red here, it uh, peaked in 2018 how many sales, how many vehicles were sold, and it just plummeted. Look at that. That's a, It's even steepest in the last, basically, this half. That's the story here. Volkswagen, same thing. And then Nissan, um, they're all falling to the wayside. In the meantime, sales of Tesla in China is going up. So something happened. Yeah. Well, uh, so here's what's happened. Uh, as you know, I lived in China for a time. I worked there. I visited there. I've been in a few different parts of the country. And all those foreign car companies uh, were considered premium brands. Volkswagen, uh, even Nissan, definitely Buick uh, under the GM uh, umbrella. But what they were getting was not cutting edge cars. They were getting late models. So when the new Buick Regal came out, the old Buick Regal tooling was packed up and shipped over to China. And they'd get it and they go, wow, great, a brand new car. Well, that's great in the days before the internet got really big and everyone's on social media. They don't want an old car. 
especially in a new old car, what these car companies would do was in, was bring in an old car and then make it even cheaper and even less good. So what they were doing was basically selling them garbage. The taxis were all old model Nissans that were brand new, but rickety. That's not how you make your customers happy. The Chinese consumer today is sophisticated. They want all the new tech. They want the latest, greatest. And that's why they're not going to buy these. Uh, the ID4 uh, that was built by a Chinese partner that's just like an ID4, except cheaper and not as good. Wait, you're selling me something that's not even as good? I don't want that. I want the real thing. Then you get to Tesla who's making threes and whys that are arguably the best Tesla's made in the world. They want those cars. So the real problem isn't the cars. The, it's, it's the companies trying to sell the cars in the wrong way and not understanding what has changed in the market in the last 20 years. Okay. Fantastic. I was trying to find a question to see how smart you are. <laughs> I'm going to test your intelligence. <laughs> Uh, I, I think I've proved myself out pretty well today. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question. Okay. Barry's dad has three sons, Snap, Crackle, and who? Barry. <laughs> you are smart. Okay. Thank you so much, Brian. Follow him on his YouTube channel, Future Raza. It's brilliant. Love it. Thank you so much, Brian. <laughs> See you soon. Bye -bye. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.